Hello and welcome to another Excel at the Office video. My name's Adrian. I run the web website ito.blog, stands for Excel at the Office, and I'm here to help you uh, understand various things using Microsoft products. And today I'm going to help you, I'm going to run you through the recently published 2021 census information. Uh, I think it's a, a fascinating read and along the way I'll show you how you can interpret the information because a lot of people they don't really like uh, stats and data and it bemuses them possibly to the extent that you may have dyscalculia um, so I'm going to help you through that and then I'm going to show you some tools how to use Excel uh, to analyze the information and go further with the downloads. You might not have noticed the ONS publishing it. There's not been a lot of news on it because I guess the news stream over the last week or and a half or so has been, it was taken up first of all by uh, the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. Uh, uh, or if you're interested in more Hollywood style things, there's a Johnny Depp trial and a whole bunch of news uh, last week culminating in recently, uh, if you prefer theatre, the the political theatre of um, who's running the country or who isn't, uh, as it seems now. But let's get to it. So to find the ONS information, uh, I've just gone on, uh, well, in this case, Bing, but I tend to use Google, but either or. <coughs> the Just search for ONS census, and that will take you to the uh, Office for National Statistics site. Now this is, you probably completed the form, uh, well, by law, you would have had to last year about the uh, coming around the various questions about who lives in your household, um, how many people, what the protected characteristics are, the working status, and so on. So this is now the first release of all the data published from that, including, importantly, the population profile, which is what the first um, release does. Now, unfortunately uh, for ONS, it's a little bit confusing uh, to get to the data on the site. So you have to go to census releases, first results, and timeline. Um, and then I get the uh, first results on the release calendar and finally the publications uh, so the population household estimates I'm going to go for England and Wales but if you're living in Wales or you're interested in just in Wales uh, then that might be helpful for you so here we are we're finally at the site that gives you the population and household estimates report as the ONS have analyzed from all that data that they've gathered uh, tens of millions of records all uploaded to their systems in databases in the last year and this is the initial analysis on just the basics so it includes things like uh, the population change since the last uh, census uh, two of the protected characteristics recorded um, age and sex, uh, sex not to be confused with gender, so sex is more the biological characteristic. I know that lately it's been confused uh, in a lot of other articles and debates. Um, where people are in uh, and how dense the population is, uh, how many people to a household on average, um, and also you can download the data which I'll show you uh, in a moment. So just taking uh, the main points, running you through what the ONS themselves have published and adding a little bit of interpretation. Uh, so the population uh, is now at uh, just under, a shade under 60 million in England and Wales. That would be rounded to 60 million if you're rounding it to the nearest million or uh, 59 six million if you wanted to do it to the nearest decimal point which is uh, three million uh, just over three million more um, than uh, what was published last time which equates to uh, sorry three three and a half million more so that's six percent increase which is a slight uh, slightly lower increase than occurred between 2001 and 2011 as I'll show you and generally the male and female population <clears throat> at 50, uh, 49 and 51% percent respectively remains relatively unchanged. Um, however, the largest growth of that 6% uh, 
as we'll see in a moment, came from those that were age 65 and over. So uh, the big growth coming, 19% increase in those in the uh, almost pensionable years now, since the pension age changed a little while ago. Uh, and those 60 million or so people lived among 25 or so million households. So that's just over uh, two people or 2.4, if you want to be precise, um, households, people per household. And I did, I ran some stats on it uh, in Excel and I found that uh, that's similar to the situation 10 years ago. So then it gives you some changes in the growth and again if you're really not that entertained by figures in um, uh, in text it can be a little uninspiring however the first graph is quite helpful because that shows the uh, increasing trend since the very first census in 1801 so when you hover over the chart that's quite useful um, so there were nine million people in England and Wales or at least recorded by the census uh, 220 years ago uh, that increased quite steeply you can see a kind of uh, curve there that means that's kind of a growing increase uh, right up until 1901 and then it started to kind of uh, slow down that increase as uh, there's more prosperity in the country less poverty um, generally around the world the more prosperous countries their population rate slows down and stalls uh, as they become more economically um, advanced so um, and they don't have uh, 1941 so there's a bit of a gap there but I'll show you a little trick to kind of uh, estimate that and an unusual situation so during in, in the 1971 to 1981 census 10 that 10 year period the population actually reduced by 0.2 million and then it recovered slightly in 1991 but then the growth spurt happened between largely between 2001 and 2011 that was a fairly significant jump and a somewhat significant jump between in the last 10 years uh, albeit as I'll show you that's slower one thing uh, you can do uh, with this data um, in that chart is download the data in Excel and I'll show you a quick uh, uh, so if I just open I've downloaded that click that I'll open the file And you see these are the population num figures relating to that chart now and they've provided it in Excel. So there's the decades of the census. There's the population in broad millions terms and there's the precise population that's not been rounded to that nearest decimal point of millions. What I'm going to do is just show you the change in growth rate. Uh, I'm going to click enable editing uh, because for some reason uh, Microsoft uh, Excel I think it just protects things so that it can't run macros and viruses on your computer it's a safety tool what I want to know is not just the population growth but the change in population year on year um, so uh, but first of all uh, yeah let's let's look at that change so if I just call this column percent change and then um, so obviously there's no change in the first year but this is a helpful calculation to know in Excel so if you want to know the percentage from one year to the next you uh, type equals as with any formula uh, you take the uh, the current year so that will be 10.2 million or uh, B11 Actually, let's do it more precise. Let's, let's do the exact percent change based on the precise population because otherwise some rounding errors might uh, make the uh, data a bit skewed. So I want this, uh, l the latest year's population um, minus the, oh, hang on a moment. So sorry about that, the uh, doorbell just rang, but um, coming back to it, so you uh, equals uh, the latest year's population 
And first of all, uh, so latest year's population divided by uh, minus the previous year's population and then divided by the original population. So that, uh, and what we will need to do is just encase that first bit in brackets so it doesn't mash up the calculation. So what that's doing, C11 minus C10, so I'm getting the difference between the two years and then dividing that difference by the original year, which will give me the percentage that difference is of the original year, i.e. the percent growth, the percent change. So I press enter. Um, at, at, by default, under general formula, general formats, that will be a decimal, but you just press the percentage button and that changes it to a percentage for you. Uh, so that was quite a big growth year, 1801 to 1811, 14% increase in population. And I could retype that uh, population figure, uh, percent change, sorry, figure slowly uh, for each year, but a quick shortcut if you want to um, just copy down formulas is uh, you can just grab grab that little black dot in the corner of the cell and drag it down which is pretty handy to a, a table like this and now that's showing me the percentage change each year so really you can see a quite a high growth in the 1800s to early 1900s over 10% growth a year and then that slowed down in the 1900s and uh, there's a blip 20, 2001 to 2011 with 8%, but then that slowed again to 6% in the last 10 years. Uh, there's coming up with some value errors here because they haven't um, put any census information, but what I can do in, in here is just figure out what the average is and just make an assumption that it's going to be halfway between 39 or 40 million here and uh, the 44 million in 1951 and to do that uh, a useful uh, formula in Excel is if I just type equals so again every formula every function you do always starts with equals and I'm going to open the brackets um, uh, sorry I'm going to type equals average and it gives you a prompt as to what it's doing uh, which when I double click on it opens brackets for me and then I'm going to type set that cell number one and then a comma to separate it from uh, number two which is that cell there C23 and C25 so every cell has a reference uh, it states the column name with the row name and that's your cell reference and when I press enter that's averaged those two out so we can assume in 1941 there was around about 42 million people should there have not been a war and a census completed for example uh, and then finally uh, now I've got those figures I can plot them on a chart uh, so uh, for um, to create a chart I'm going to select all my uh, data points here and go to up to insert I want to see it as a, a line graph so here we go is my I've just added that simple line chart you can change the title uh, as you wish so I'm going to call this percent change in population uh, I like to make my lines uh, much thicker than that than that thin line so I can go to uh, the format pane and uh, where the shape outline color here if you choose that drop down menu you can quickly choose the weight without having to bring up the uh, chart options in the sidebar so that shows it much uh, thicker uh, but what I want to do as well is add uh, select my data when I right click on the chart I'll select my data because I want to make sure I add the horizontal axes labels so I can correspond uh, what year each data point is so you can generally do that after you don't have to always do it uh, select all your data at first so there we go when I select that range corresponding to the percentages now I can see for what years uh, those percentages apply so as I, as I mentioned earlier as the population increased the rate of change decreased with a slight blip in between 2001 and 2011 that peaked at eight percent and then back down to six percent in the most recent um, year of the census 
so that's I think that's quite interesting information. Uh, so that's uh, I'm going to close that, and uh, there's no need to save that. And if I go back to the ONS explanations, so yeah, as as the population rates increased, um, it'd be helpful if the ONS provided it as well. But there's a uh, you can plot it on two separate access bars. I'll show you these that on a different uh, day because I'm already going fairly in depth on this census run through. So the, as the population increased, the rate of growth decreased. Um, So here is quite useful. So in section three, they talk about the changes in uh, regions and local authorities. So here's where the uh, populations are most populous. Uh, for this first bar chart. So that's what that's telling you. So the population in 2021, the most uh, populous area was the southeast at 9.3 million people. And that had grown, the second set of bar charts here, that had grown by 7.5%. Uh, the second most populous area, as you may uh, no be, not be surprising, is uh, London with just under 9 million. And that had grown at seven, nearly 8%. And then in the east of England, that was the, although that's uh, around 6.3 uh, million now, the change from 2011 is the highest in the country with 8.3% uh, uh, in areas uh, such as uh, East Anglia, for example, and elsewhere in the east of England. So I thought that was uh, quite uh, interesting. And Wales really um, hasn't grown much at all. And I'll show you in a moment the real useful maps that the ONS provide, whereby several areas of Wales have actually shrunk in population. So uh, Wales has grown by 1.4% in the last 10 years, whereas uh, England has grown by that uh, 6 to 7% or so, depending on the region. And the biggest population growth, um, it highlights several, because this goes down to local authority area, so the, um, the local council um, regions of England and Wales. So it highlights, for example, uh, the biggest growth being in Tower Hamlets, which uh, increased by 22% of its population. So often featured in uh, the news, particularly around um, uh, Chelsea, Westminster. Um, so you'll be familiar with these locations uh, and I'll come on to that in a bit. But Chelsea and uh, Westminster actually had population decreases, whereas a lot of London, it was increased. Um, and this this is a really useful interactive map uh, to show where those highs and lows have occurred. So on this map, um, judging by the key, so anywhere with blue has uh, reduced slightly. So in the northwest and west of Wales, particularly in, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to really mispronounce this, <laughs> Cardigan, Cardigan, Cardigan. Cardigan, that sounds familiar, maybe not. But anyway, uh, that's reduced by the most in Wales of all the local authorities by 6% reduction. You can see in the kind of change figure here, the 2011 and 2021. Um, oh, I've selected that now and I want to deselect it. There we go. So you just hover over it and it shows you uh, what's happened. So there was 76,000 people in that um, name. I'm completely making a fool of myself trying to pronounce. And now there's 71,500. Whereas in other areas, it's uh, largely increased. So in my um, home county of Devon, uh, the most areas, most authorities have increased by uh, 5 to 10%. So in North Devon, for example, 5.3. In Torridge, 6.7. Cornwall's had 7.1 increase in population, so there's uh, nearly 600,000 people residing there now. But the biggest increase came in uh, East Devon, which is now a 14% increase in population. And this map you can use to zoom uh, in and out on different areas and drag uh, around uh, the places. So when we zoom in on London, for example, you see quite consistent uh, population growth around London and with the 
I select uh, Westminster there and you can see a reduction there. So those are Camden, Westminster, Kensington and Chelsea. So that's quite a, a posh area. That's reduced by uh, 10%. I no doubt that the residents will be pleased. <laughs> Some residents will be pleased their areas reduced. Um, but in areas like uh, Barking and Dagenham, that's gone up by 18%. So it's quite a quite a difference. And uh, yeah, so you can browse this for your area as well, zooming in and out, looking around the country, uh, and uh, so on. So that's a really useful map. Um, then we get on to the uh, demographics, particularly age and sex dem demographics. Um, and I'll show you uh, the population trend. So again, there's a lot of textual information there describing the data, uh, what you could call descriptive statistics. Uh, basically, what how, counting stuff, how many people and there are, and what's changed. But I quite like the visual type of information. So this is a useful chart showing the um, what's called a population pyramid, and it, it's called a population pyramid because it's got uh, steps on either side. One side represents females, the other side males. Um, and helpfully, uh, the ONS have provided an outline. So this black line shows what the population was in 2011, 10 years ago. And the uh, coloured in bars is what it is now. So all you need to do is, uh, by eye, you can see, well, the 70 to 74 age group has risen significantly. That's uh, around about a, a quarter, between a third and a quarter, uh, I'd say, by eye increase. Uh, compared to just 10 years ago. So that's a massive uh, step up. That's probably where most of the growth in the over 65s have come, is that 70 to 74 bracket. Uh, but also there's been a big jump in the 50s age category, so the 50 year olds to 54, and even more so the 55 to 59s. And um, however, those in their 40s, uh, have reduced in population since last year. And again, you can um, use uh, the uh, ONS provide, you can download a little Excel file of this. And as I did before, do the percentage change by, um, so you start with your uh, uh, prior year's number minus uh, uh, the previous year and then divide that by the original year to see what percentage that equates to. So people in their 40s have reduced, people in their uh, early 20s and late teens, the number of population has reduced, and the fours and under has reduced, which is, um, I guess, um, might be surprising. So very young children and toddlers, there's fewer of those in the 2021 census than there were in the 2011 census. However, other children, those aged um, 5 to 14, have increased by, um, again, going by eye, that's around 5 to 10 percent. So there's some uh, interesting changes. Uh, and as we'll see in the next helpful chart, uh, there are, um, uh, so they, they pick out the highs and lows of um, those population changes. So for example, the most highest proportion of change in local authorities of those under 15 years are Barking, Dagenham, Slough and Luton. Uh, but the next chart shows you the changes by population, broad population grouping, because generally not many people are interested in five year age brackets, but you want to kind of know, well, What's the difference in broad age groupings? Maybe these are a bit too broad, but certainly we can see uh, for uh, children, uh, the age structure and change. So this shows the difference between, um, oh, sorry, this shows the actual proportion of the population by local authority area. So the more intense and darker the color, it, the higher the proportion of that population is under 15 years old, whereas the lighter the colour, the higher the pop uh, the lower the proportion. So generally, when you've got a high proportion of under 15 years, you'll have a lower proportion of 65 years and over. So it seems to be that um, the older adage is true, where 
when people get older they may be uh, moved to the more coastal regions because certainly in Dorset, East Devon, Teambridge, South Hams, uh, some of the areas I'm very familiar with, um, but certainly also on the southeast coast in Wildon and, and Rother and Lewes uh, and around east of England, east Anglia and so on, the population of those uh, in their of retirement age, you could say, is much higher than younger age groups. And generally those, uh, the percentage of the population in their, those young to uh, slightly older adults, but not quite uh, pensioners, uh, is shown in this graph here. So that's quite interesting to um, check out. And again, you can download the data for yourself should you wish. Now this is uh, quite interesting, the population and land area. So this shows how how dense is the uh, populations of uh, England and Wales. So And they measure it by uh, the people per square kilometre. Um, so for example, there's just under 400 people per square kilometre in England and Wales. Now say for, comparably the population of France is slightly bigger but the country's massively bigger so the average density is going to be a lot lower but um, I quite like their uh, equating it to football pitches because people know how whether you're interested or not in football um, you know how big a football pitch is and that can be quite interesting to just equate so generally there's about two to three people almost three people residents per football pitch sized area of land which is slightly higher as uh, you'd expect because than 2011 because the population has increased but the land area hasn't increased and uh, much higher than that it was a century ago in Wales it's a lot lower as the population is lower but there's a significant amount of land um, uh, compared to England and in some areas, again, the, it um, highlights, interestingly, the most densely populated local authorities, and naturally most of those are reside in uh, London boroughs. So, for example, um, Tower Hamlets being the top. So if you imagine, um, so generally around the UK, and you may, you may feel quite busy where you are, uh, you it's a, on average 400 residents per square kilometre in Tower Hamlets, that rises to nearly 16,000. So that, they helpfully point out, is, um, uh, well, that's multiple times more residents per square kilometre. And I'll come to some other stats that are buried, uh, and visualisations that are buried in this in due course, because it really helps to um, visualise what's um, the differences. So I've, I've this next chart shows that population density and how it's changed across the last 10 years. So as a default, it selects 2021. So this is the population density and surprise, surprise, the more intense areas are shaded around cities and the less intense areas are shaded uh, a lighter color. They are the rural areas. So that may not be surprising and it will be a similar picture in 2011. However, what we're interested in is the percentage change. How has it changed in my area, for example? Well, um, as with the population growth, the population density in East Devon has therefore uh, massively increased, whereas in population in North uh, West Wales has um, decreased somewhat. So you can, again, using these uh, zoom in, zoom out areas, see how your population density has changed. Um, and then it's uh, the number of households, so we can browse again. I really like this mapping information to show the number of households um, in various local authorities. And local authority, if you work in a local authority, this information will be invaluable to you to understand your local population and who it is you're serving and providing services to. And then the ONS talks about future publications and then gives you the data, which I'll run through in a minute. But what it um, kind of skirts over is when you uh, people won't scroll this far, 
Um, it gives you the glossary and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of boring stuff. But right down at the bottom, it will give you some related links. And um, one thing I quite like is... Uh, where is it? How the population has changed where you live, I think, is the one. Uh, census 21. Yeah, that's it. So this is the thing that I think, why don't ONS go with this as their kind of headline report? Because actually, uh, this is really helpful. So how the population has changed where you live, Census 2021. So you can select your local authority. So let's uh, choose, um, just out of interest, um, God, there's quite a lot. So if I just start typing Tower Hamlets, because that was picked out as the uh, top one by the ONS themselves in terms of the population density and the biggest growth area. So then it comes more like a, an infographic and description uh, that's easy to easier to read and gives you the key information, but in a much more visual form so uh, well done the ONS to this tool but I'd uh, suggest they don't bury it right at the bottom where no one's going to see it so that's why I'm kind of partly why I'm giving you this video to talk you through it because I, I doubt that this will be, get publicized in such a way so again it provides you that kind of broad context before you get into Tower Hamlets talking about how many more people there are um, the largest census population ever recorded and helpfully in turn giving you uh, visualizations of where the biggest growth areas are rather than just that if you recall that bar chart uh, that it started a bland blue bar chart for each area well actually it's quite helpful to see it mapped because i can now visually see the east of england in comparison to uh, other areas if uh, bars don't really resonate with the way i understand data there's a little bit of descriptives not too much though about the uh, chart that you're seeing because again, it's uh, useful to have that uh, visual uh, overview. So then it provide it starts providing the context of uh, Tower Hamlets. So the population has increased 22%, which is right up in the uh, extreme uh, orange here, which is different to other areas uh, where which haven't uh, increased as much. And you just continue scrolling through this and then it zooms in on Tower Hamlets and gives you a useful comparison. If you live there, uh, you might want to compare to how that compares with nearby, for example, in Southwark or City of London, Hackney. Uh, and so on. So then it compares um, in the descriptives as well with hyperlinks if you wanted to hone in on those areas should you wish. Again, carry on scrolling. Um, it then zooms out a bit and gives you the context, not just of the local authority areas, but the whole of London region local authority areas uh, and how the whole of uh, London looks. And I, I, I just really like these graphics, which uh, they're pretty impressive. Did you notice that? So it goes from a map view and in all the colors magically morph into this nice uh, graduated bar chart oh love a good bar chart not least one that's just been transformed from a map that's just brilliant um, but anyway so uh, it compares all the areas of london it ordered in this this time in terms of the population change in the last 10 years and there we go the the uh, some of the kensington and chelsea and westminster have reduced in population, whereas others, uh, particularly Tower Hamlets at the top, not just the top in London in terms of increase in population, but also around the rest of England and Wales. And then if, you, if that wasn't enough for you, this then puts uh, all the various local authorities, uh, each one is a dot, and it shows you where that uh, dot is in terms of its percentage change in population. Um, so this is a nice um, kind of bubble bar chart and it shows you the normal distribution of where the most common uh, in population changes are in terms of the percent change. So most local authorities, if we look around the bottom here, had between uh, 2 to 10% population change, particularly in the 4 to 6 region, that seems to be uh, the norm and we know 
from earlier, the average across England and Wales was 6% when we did that little calculation. So that seems about right. But you can see Tower Hamlets is what, what you'd call the, um, the exception to the norm or an outlier in that it's uh, vastly uh, higher compared to 10 years ago uh, when compared to other local authorities. And this will be Kensington and Chelsea here because it's vastly lower. So that's an outlier at the other end. Uh, and there we go, there it labels it for you just to provide some contrast and comparisons for the local authority you've chosen. So I'd encourage you to go ahead and choose yours. Um, and then those dots get overlaid on a map. And why they look different sizes now, This, these dots are account for both the size of the population that exists. Um, so Tower Hamlets is a kind of medium sized orange dots there and then the color denotes the per percent change that has happened so for example in Cornwall that's a rather large dot but it's only because it's uh, five, as we said, saw earlier five to six hundred thousand population however it's light orange because it hasn't changed uh, increased as much as um, the dark orange dots and some of the blue dots, they are large populations, but they've increased only very uh, slightly. Or the deeper blue dots, they've uh, uh, decreased, in fact. So that gives you an indication of where the population hubs are and how they've changed in the last 10 years. So that's a nice chart too. Um, I like this chart as well. So this is a nice, um, it's almost like one of those puzzles where you... Uh, kind of you, you need <laughs> your kids might do where it's like follow this line and where does it lead um, so Tower Hamlets it was the 60th most um, populous uh, rank in of all the hundreds of local authorities in England and this year it's uh, now 39th so it's gone up 20 places and that's why that line is quite steep so the population has changed massively which has pushed it up the overall rankings as well and coming back to those football pitch size areas of land again this is a really helpful way of visualizing how many people uh, live in the area so this is how dense the population is in England generally, um, but that's going to be largely skewed, as we saw earlier, by the city areas where there's high rise uh, buildings and so on, where lots of people live in one area. Uh, but then for comparison, um, there's. Uh, yeah, so sorry, that's um, this is Tower Hamlets. There's 112 people living on each football size pitch area of land. So that's that's what it's like uh, living in Tower Hamlets compared to uh, elsewhere in England. The mo least populated area being Eden in Cumbria, uh, where there's one person for every five pitches uh, of land. Although I guess it's um, quite hard to live in some places in that. Uh, quite uh, uh, how would you call it some of the countryside there is quite uh, barren and uh, treacherous at times um, so then this gives the age profile um, again so this is looking at um, London in 2011 so this is how the population pyramid looked in London generally and as you carry on scrolling, then it shows you the change in 2021. So if I just go back slightly, you can see the kind of bulge uh, in the middle decreasing slightly as the age profile in the elderly, uh, the older adults and elderly age groups get larger and also uh, some of the younger age groups. And in London, the largest age group uh, was those in there. 30s because and late late 20s uh, that makes sense because it's an exciting place to live if you're in the, that age group and that's where uh, a lot of people go to uh, chase the opportunities but um, it's a lot different in the city life compared to England so this has now changed to show England so it's a lot flatter you'll notice people are spread out more evenly when you average everything out um, 
but this is really useful so you notice remember earlier I talked you through the population pyramid and the changes in uh, the black outlined lines and the bar charts whereas actually this is a nicer way to be able to see clearly the changes in population so the 40s age group has reduced as has the 15 to 24s and the 0 to 4 age group but as I mentioned before the biggest increase goodness so it's more than a quarter or a third as I kind of estimated it's it's um, well over a third almost uh, 40% increase in the 70 to 74s and well beyond that as well lots of people the aging population which if you're a local authority again this will be very relevant for you because it will denote the kind of services for your area you need to um, provide and it's good to understand your local uh, population and the support for uh, that you're be providing or if you're in a uh, NHS trust the healthcare that you uh, you may expect to provide and this is how it's changed in Tower Hamlets so overall it increased by 22% as we saw on the ONS uh, highlighting this as an outlier so it's increased everywhere but mostly in those b between uh, 35 and uh, 69 that seems to be where the bulk of the increase has been uh, even going up by 50 percent or so in some areas like uh, the 45 to 49 age group um, and then finally this then compares those um, areas that have seen a big uh, increase uh, or thirty percent or more in the elderly population. So, if you're in one of these uh, local authorities, uh, you may wish to kind of revise your strategies and processes and support for your elderly populations because it's massively different to maybe if you la if you were using Census 2011 information. Um, and then this is a similar chart, that, but in this case it's showing the high areas that had a big increase in uh, those under 15 years uh, in population. And then the map shows the uh, reductions as well. So I, I thought that was a really, that was a really helpful um, uh, piece of information there, and I think. Uh, uh, It'd be good if the ONS were to publicize that because that's a really helpful way of scrolling for your area in a kind of dynamic way and understanding what the population is like. So I'm going to close that now and uh, come back to the census information. And I'm going to pause the video just so bear with me just while I get my uh, breath back and gather my thoughts. And we'll come to um, a spreadsheet of data. So I'll take you through. Um, how to kind of download the data and analyze it further for your areas and with some excel tips along the way so um, now i've got the spreadsheet open so when you go to the uh, ons um, data you can download the data set they provide um, which um, you can get the census data from that kind of dashboard page that they provide when you first search for the ONS census. Uh, you click on that and you can download the Excel uh, spreadsheet of that data. And that will look something, or exactly, like this. So the first few sheets tell you um, stuff about it, what, what's in it, and any notes to bear in mind or caveats. Um, but I'm going to get straight into um, what uh, table p01 a catchy name usual resident population by sex and local authorities um, so for example you might be interested to know well how what is the percentage of males and females um, so um, uh, it gives you the overall population here but if i just um, do the um, uh, calculate it for myself the percentages so all persons there's as we know there's nearly 60 million people for females that's 30.4 million for males that's 29.2 million so to calculate the percentage it's really easy in excel uh, you just press uh, equals 
and for females I'm going to choose the number of females divided by all persons. So to calculate a percentage, and helpfully it's done that for the whole uh, table for me because it automatically formatted uh, as a table. But I'm just going to, as before, I'm concentrating on the England and Wales bit, so I'll change that as a percentage. So you don't need to do all this, oh, this divided by that, divided times 100. No, just do the uh, the number you want to know the percentage of, and then divide it by the uh, denominator, i.e. the big number of which it is a part. And then the same for males, so again, equals the number of males divided by all persons. Um, so that, if I change that to percentage, so again, 51 and 49%, which we recall from the um, census uh, analysis by the ONS. And again, if you want to impact a bar chart, you can just highlight uh, those two. For, I'm going to do England and Wales. Go to insert uh, a bar chart. And one thing to be warned about for um, Excel, it will try and be helpful and accentuate your um, uh, y-axis for you. Uh, so if you don't want, uh, if you always want it to start from zero, you can just go to the uh, uh, chart design area, which is, uh, you can always um, right click on a chart and format chart area. And then select the axes, choose my axes options under the what look like data bars here. I'll go to the axes options and it sets the minimum, maximum and the units as automatic. So I'm going to change that. So I want my minimum to always be zero because I don't like exaggerating, exaggerating things. Um, you can leave the maximum to auto if you want and you can even change the units. So that means uh, so 0.1, so that's denoting that it's going to be 10% gap for each of my major lines, which is fine. So this is your uh, male and female uh, split in terms of the uh, difference between the sexes. And you, uh, if you're a local authority, again, you can you can do this for any any one of these uh, local authority areas. Create your own charts, and um, you might want to just do it and then drag it down to your authority area because it might be particularly different or um, for your authority area and uh, use that in any reports that you have to do. So next it's um, there's the population by five year age group. Now one thing that's uh, I'd like to do here, show you how to create that population chart. But I, first of all, I know my categorizations are going to be very wordy because I've got for each one uh, this note 12 and I don't want that on my um, charts. Um, so first of all, I'll show you, we'll, we'll create the chart in the first place. So I'm going to select all the titles and in the first row, because I'm going to do it for England and Wales, then I'm going to insert and this time I'm going to insert a horizontal bar chart and it's uh, not interpreted the if you get this happening it's because it's got the rows and columns the wrong way round so you can just press the switch rows and columns and it will interpret the uh, data as one series whereas it was thinking I had multiple series of data there um, but as, as, as I mentioned earlier if I just drag this uh, down a bit so you can see um, and again the freeze panes is getting in the way so what I'm going to do uh, if as it's prompts in this row 5 freeze panes are turned on which means as you scroll down you'll always have this age 4 titles showing and um, row B column B showing for the area but I don't want that because I want to see my whole um, spreadsheet so what you can do is um, go to your view and just, uh, uh, I had the chart selected then, so on the 
unselect the chart, go to view and freeze panes. So then I can scroll anywhere without it being uh, frozen. So if I drag this down, and this is my entire population period pyramid. So the highest population of people in England and Wales is between the 25 to uh, 59 age group. Uh, however, I want those things to show a bit clearer because it's it's too wordy at the moment. So here's a handy tip. So select your um, text. This is how to um, change a group of um, text. So if I go to um, Control F, and that brings up your Find and Replace tool. So I want to replace the text. So for example, I want to replace aged space and replace it with nothing. And if I go to replace all, that's made 19 replacements to those categories. I click OK and I can close that. And you can see now it's um, taken off that word aged and that's a lot uh, snappier titles. But I'm going to do the same with the note 12. So I'm going to find it's going to say find what. So I'm going to type out uh, note 12 as is on every category there annoyingly uh, and I'm going to replace it um, again I'm not going to replace it with anything but you might uh, use this bulk text replace for other um, information or formulas but in this scenario I'm just going to do it to tidy up the um, the axis titles so I'm going to click replace all and again that's cleaned up my categorizations at no end. So now I can actually see my whole categories um, from four years and under right up to 90 years and over. So that's a handy handy uh, tool, the find and replace tool. So you just control F, find and replace uh, text. If you're in a local authority, you might want to look at the population uh, breakdown by age of uh, your particular area. So this is really useful for local councils to understand for their children's services um, air, uh, functions and areas, whether it's a local council, local authority or county council, you'll be able to determine who your target population is. The same with uh, adults or dealing with vulnerable adults and uh, elderly uh, in your population. Yep. Obviously, if I was at the Treasury, I'd be looking at the elderly population to anticipate how much um, pension uh, I'm going to be having to be paying from the government uh, for this uh, growing uh, cohort in the pensionable age group, particularly those 70 to 74 years. So those just kind of early on in receiving their uh, state pension which will no doubt carry on through to the latter years so uh, there'll be some budgeting and uh, forecasting to do with that information uh, if you want to look at um, so this is an interesting one this is the population density we looked at it from um, a map point of view earlier with the ONS helpfully provided uh, the um, uh, the maps but what I'm going to show you here is just some conditional formatting as I've highlighted to myself as a little reminder at the top here to compare the different population densities so I'm going to select the first one uh, and then I'm going to hold down shift and select the last number and um, under my home tab conditional formatting is really easy uh, these days when you choose the drop down you can just simply choose what whether you want it presented as data bars and again choosing your color on that you can do a series a color series of um, high to uh, denoting the high to low so um, make sure you choose the ones where the lows are red uh, green in this case and the highs are red um, or you can have yeah various color series uh, or just choose the uh, intensity um, and then there's eye concepts as well. Um, so that's that's the real basics and it serves most purposes. I quite like using color scales from high to low because then that gives me a consistent relative gauge of uh, the various um, numbers. So you'll see very low in 
uh, Copeland. And remember Eden, that place where there's only one person per foot, five football pitches? That's because there's a population density of 26 people per square kilometer. So that's the lowest, that's the greenest uh, place. Uh, maybe in more ways than uh, the conditional formatting here. Manchester, by contrast, there's nearly 5,000 people per square kilometre. But if we scroll down and look for when red ones pop out at us, that'll probably be down in the uh, London area. Here we are. So London is where all the highly dense populations are, particularly inner London areas of which, so Camden, around 10,000 people, Hackney, um, for approaching 14,000. But the highest... Uh, densely populated area, Tower Hamlets at 15,700 15, near enough. Uh, that seems to be the most densely populated area in uh, England and Wales. However, closely behind Eden in Cumbria, we see um, Powys. Um, that's at 26, so that's just very slightly over one person per five football pitches. So that's a, a, a very low, densely populated area. And then finally, um, I'll just show you the, um, this is the households information that you can analyze uh, again in your area. If you're a local authority, you might want to assess this information for how many um, houses you are serving with uh, things like recycling and other um, services. Uh, but also just as a general, out of general interest, you might want to compare uh, the households in your area and how that's changing. And I did some maths before where I've, I've identified um, the uh, population per house household uh, as 2.4. So that's literally dividing the um, populate the number of people there are. Sorry, the number of yeah, the number of people there are. So that's in the table P01, which is the population. So table P01, all persons, which is cell C8. I've divided that number by the number of households, which is C8 on this page. So when you divide, uh, some basic Excel maths, fifty nine and a half million by twenty four point seven million. That equates to 2.4 people per household. And I took the liberty because I thought, oh, I wonder if um, they've been building houses over the last 10 years and there's been population increases, immigration, and uh, various changes in demographics. Maybe uh, there's been people separating, people uh, getting together in households. So I was interested to know, oh, I wonder if the household size has changed. Um, but as it turns out, when I get the figures from 2011, so this is the number of households, 20, so there were 23.4 uh, million households and a population of 56.1 million people. Uh, when you run the maths on that, it's also 2.4 people per household. So that's a uh, not really changed in the last 10 years in terms of the number of people living in it, each household. That may be different, uh, I, I'm sure, because generally when you average out things, that hides a, a mass of detail uh, that may be different in your area, whether that's uh, Tower Hamlets or County Durham or any of the other places, maybe uh, Devon uh, council areas in my neck of the woods. Um, but that I think that's just interesting to compare and get an idea of the population changes. So that's um, the key uh, download from the uh, population demographics. Another download they offer is um, the changes in that population density over time. So they provide not just the 2021 situation, but for the last five decades, going back to 1981. Uh, so you can download this from the ONS um, census information when browsing the other information, you know, when I scrolled down uh, to all the other useful stuff earlier. However, one thing that it does, it provides a supreme amount of decimal points, which is just uh, not very nice to look at. So if you want to reduce the number of decimal points on any 
uh, number um, you just select the numbers I'm, I'm not selecting all of them here but you know how to do that now I showed you earlier select the first one hold shift and select the last one uh, but I'm just going to show you the difference here by selecting this range oh. and under the home tab of the ribbon so the ribbon being up the top here as I've shared in my basics of Excel this is useful so just deep keep pressing the decrease decimal until you come up with a sensible thing that's nicer to look at and a, a rule of thumb and good practice um, I generally if it if these are if they're big numbers like this in the hundreds there's no point having decimals if you are going to use decimals um, just stick to one decimal place and be whatever you're using be consistent you'll rarely ever need more than two decimal places it just looks like uh, you don't understand data if you're publishing things with uh, two or more decimal places uh, if it's not scientific research and if you're being inconsistent with your decimal places it just uh, it looks a lot more professional if you be consistent and just stick with zero or one decimal place um, so that looks a lot tidier now um, so I can uh, maybe use the conditional formatting uh, again I can see oh well let's use data bars to see how the um, population has changed and the density but of course when I'm including London that's going to be uh, skewing all my other uh, data so maybe a better approach would be let's highlight this and I'll include a bar chart so again I go to insert um, I can choose bar chart or maybe I'll choose a line chart for this just for something different because uh, I, th I think that looks uh, a bit better as well so over the course of time the population density of England and Wales has gradually increased and helpfully if you just want to browse your data uh, without doing a bar chart for each you can just simply drag and drop what it's looking at and change it uh, accordingly so this one the population density has um, uh, well that that's fooled me that one because again as I mentioned earlier be careful because Excel will sometimes skew the, um, uh, the the axes to accentuate any differences so uh, let me ch change this first so the minimum I want to set again as zero um, and the maximum let's do something comparable for all of these areas so I'm going to choose 500 um, for this so then I can compare like for like as I go through and choose the data so that's relatively lower in uh, uh, Wales I had selected there so this is England population density uh, started off at 350 per square kilometer in 1981 rose up and is now 434 but in Wales uh, on a similar scale as you can see it's much lower now that I've set that um, the axis parameters and it's increased only very slightly so you can try uh, line charts and things to uh, compare the trends and uh, if I go down to uh, Tower Hamlets um, just see how that's changed over the last uh, 50 uh, 40 years or so sorry um, it's, it's a lot to scroll through to try and find Tower Hamlets and it doesn't do it by alphabetical order so again I'm going to use my um, control and F instead of fi uh, replacing it I'm just going to find Tower Hamlets so you can just type the word tower when you've got um, any cell selected it will go and find uh, where you have data that matches that when you choose find so I'm going to close this because I found it so Tower Hamlets here's my density information and uh, this time rather than um, do a line graph I'm just going to use some quick conditional formatting to see uh, how that's changed over time so it's gone from 7080 in 1981 to uh, over double that in um, the latest year so depending on your local authority the population density will have changed um, maybe a little or a lot up or down 
um, but it's it's useful to look at this on a long term trend because that might um, uh, ch change what decisions or information you're providing on and services in your uh, local area if you work for the council or if you work in marketing again this information is useful to see where uh, the, your main target audiences are um, so that's a quick run through well not quick but um, an in-depth run through sorry of the uh, census 2021 the um, population and households estimates so ONS in summary ONS has done some really good work there putting that data out which I've just uh, which you're able to download and analyze further for yourself they've put a really good uh, in-depth um, report online that I kind of showed you through earlier going through the different maps but the secret nugget I think uh, is being uh, everyone's missing a trick on is that one that just visualizes the data takes a lot of the text out gives you a much easier nicer summary so I'd recommend you navigate to that and see it for your local authority area because for example there's some ready-made screen grabs you can take from there using the snipping tool as I share in other videos uh, put in your presentation um, a template of which you might want to download from my excel at the office uh, com site um, and they're ready to go they look nice and will give you uh, some really useful information in a intuitive way that doesn't do your heading because there's so many numbers to try and uh, wrap your head around so I hope you find that helpful I know it's been a fairly long video but I think it's valuable information this this sort of thing only happens once every 10 years and it's essential it's one of the most essential pieces of um, the puzzle in, in terms of understanding the area and country in which you live, understanding the population and the demographics. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye out and see what um, the ONS publish uh, later this autumn and winter in terms of other protected characteristics, demographics and so on for the census. But um, I hope you uh, find that useful and uh, keep an eye out for another video on um, Excel at the office. Take care.